That was some good introductory material to IPFS, which no doubt you are all completely aware of already, because this is the IPFS community meetup. So you all have some interest in IPFS already. A self-selecting group, one may say. So, you've had a break, you've had a chance to think about the points that were made earlier. Well, now we've got some shorter talks, although I have a tendency to ramble, um, and we've ordered them roughly in terms of complexity. I'm very simple, so I'm going to go first, and I'll try not to waste too much of your time. I'm going to talk to you about IPFS is fun, but for me, if it's not in your browser, it's not fun. So <laughs> I'm going to talk about putting IPFS in your browser. Alan Shaw is going to talk about IPFS X, which is a proposal for a new API for the JS IPFS project. Uh, Hannah's going to talk about LSing Wikipedia. What does that even mean, to LS Wikipedia? Interesting proposal. In under a second. That's a, that's a fast time for humans. <laughs> Uh, Dimitri, oh my god, Dimitri is going to blow minds. He's going to talk to you about a scalable P2P pub sub with gossip sub. Uh, that's going to be a super cool talk. I'm really excited for that. Stephen has been drafted in the last minute to blow your minds with IPLD. We, didn't, we don't just have files, we have graphs. We have both of the things. IPLD, the underpinnings. Exciting. Uh, and then Pyrgos, this is all very technical. Someone's got to be building things on top of this, otherwise we're just making tools, and that's fun. But So Pegos is going to talk to us about the, the mechanics of how you build actually like a usable system on top of the D-Web. Anyway, so that's me, I'm Ollie. I'll do a talk. IPFS London. What if you could have IPFS in your browser? No. Has anyone got IPFS in their browser? <laughs> Shut up. Shut, what does that even mean? Well... Right, so we've got this upgrade path plan, and basically <laughs> the dream goal is everyone's running IPFS on their machines, and everyone shares content via IPFS. That's great. But what about HTTP? Oh, yeah, okay. Well, everybody shares URLs today that begin HTTP colon slash slash like wicked scheme, know about it. Uh, how do we live in the kind of the time period between everybody using centralized services for everything? and the brave new future that we're aiming at, which is decentralize all the things, we, we, need a, we need an upgrade path. So, companion. IPFS companion is the, 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 the linchpin right now of how we intend to allow HTTP and IPFS to coexist and work together. It's how we get IPFS in the browser. Let me see here. So, uh, that's all words. What does it really mean? Uh, let's just demo it. It's much easier to do something than to say something. So, how do I get content into IPFS? Well, what's content? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Ask if I London. That's some content. If I want to put it in IPFS, I might do something like that. So, I've now piped that content into IPFS, and it's given me the CID for the content. So, it's done some content addressing. Very exciting. So, I've now got a CID. Ooh. What can I do with this? Well, I want something like IPFS colon colon slash slash CID. I want that to work. Right now, uh, Google tries really hard. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to start indexing all of IPFS. Maybe, you know, we put Wikipedia on IPFS. Maybe Google will start indexing every CID and maybe that will work one day. But in the meantime, we can take charge of our own destiny. So over here, I've got a Google-sponsored browser. Uh, but what I've done is I've upgraded it with IPFS Companion. Uh, available in uh, the Chrome Web Store and the Firefox add-on store. It's one of those newfangled web extensions that works in both. The works doesn't mean it doesn't work. I mean that Firefox and Chrome almost follow the same API for web extensions, but not quite. <laughs> and is your question brave or is it... <laughs> So, uh, yes, it's, that is public knowledge, yes. So <laughs> there was an interesting like, story arc to that where we spent loads of time uh, adding additional APIs to the old version of Brave, which is the current stable version of Brave. And then they, they kind of patiently allowed us to do that and said, woo, right on, IPFS, yeah, good job. Mm -hmm. And then quietly decided to switch everything from like a muon uh, electron base to Chromium. And then just as we shipped it, they were like, oh, bad news, guys. Chromium now, but they've been very supportive and they are now owning that story. They want IPFS in Brave, so that is happening and they're planning that kind of, they're planning to announce their new thing 
I'm going to be careful not to say too much more, but yes. <laughs> Brave. <laughs> uh, we, th there is a story here. This is kind of in a browser. OK, so we just saw that, oh, boo, IPFS doesn't work. <laughs> Boring, I hate that. But what if you had the thing? What if you could say IPFS colon slash slash shazam some content? Whoa, what's going on here? What's that? That's the you, you guys, you, you really do pander to my ridiculousness. Uh, some content that I put in my local IPFS repo is now available to my local browser. Incredible. So uh, the web extension has to do some interesting hacks to make that work. Uh, but the long and the short of it is uh, there's an API that lets you intercept all outbound requests from your browser. And you can then, you, you don't have the ability to manipulate the response object. What you can do is say, requests for this should actually be redire redirected here. So this is one problem that we're working with right now. I don't know if that's super clear to everyone, but the URL's gone from my nice shiny IPFS colon slash slash CID, which is the URL you want, to it's been redirected to my local IPFS node, which runs an IPFS gateway, like a public. So IPFS gateways are an important piece of the puzzle. They present over HTTP the IPFS network. Uh, so what's happened here is the web extension has grabbed IPFS colon slash slash CID, and it's redirected to my local node gateway. Very exciting. Um, the first problem you'll see with that is, how am I going to share that with a friend? This is 127001, a very popular IP address on the internet. I don't know if you've seen that around, but it's big. Uh, lots of people share it. It's meaningless. You can't share it with friends. This is where IPFS got your back. So copy public gateway URL. Ooh, ba -ba. Let's go to a browser that doesn't know about IPFS. Oh, so. What's happened here? This one has not got companion installed. So we've gone to ipfs.io slash ipfs CID, and it's loaded the content over the old mechanism that we'll call HTTP. Uh, and <laughs> it's loaded it from uh, some infrastructure that uh, IPFS protocol runs. Um, is that a single point of failure? Yes, it is a single point of failure. But the whole point is that uh, the, the HTTP gateways provide an important stepping stone to getting people who are not on IPFS on IPFS. And they are generic pieces of infrastructure that anyone can run. Anyone, you say? Yes, anyone. So what if, say, our noble sponsors, Cloudflare.com, were to run their own IPFS gateway? Would they do that? Would, I mean, <laughs> so the thing is, right, we both want to save the internet. And we think this is going to definitely help. So they want to save the internet. We want to save the internet. Will it save the Oh my god, it's going to save the internet. Here we see some content that little old me added to little old my IPFS repo. And then suddenly, IPFS.io is serving it. Well, that's crazy. But not only that, cloudflare.ipfs.com is also serving it. Incredible. It's IPFS in the browser. <sighs> Richard Silverton, a question. I don't, I don't want to, Richard's just saved my talk from going off on a tangent. This is exactly what I wanted to say next, and I'd forgotten. Thanks, Richard Silverton. <laughs> We've never met before. <laughs> so the question again for the audience was, is the, is the extension cl clever enough to actually deal with the fact that it can see that you've gone to an IPFS HTTP address and say, no, I'm not going to serve that over stinky old HTTP. I'm going to use the decentralized web. Yes, it can, Richard Silverton. Watch okay. this. So the, the address I'm going to paste in is the centralized one, ipfs.io, ipfs, redirected to my local. So what it's gone is to my local, running on my machine, ipfs gateway. And instead of going over HTTP, it has asked the network. So it's very small, but over here, I'm running an ipfs daemon. Uh, its uh, gateway is on port 8080. Yes. What else should I show you? OK, well, uh, so um, Lydell, who's not here, has been driving that project for a couple of years now. Uh, Alan and I did a whole bunch of work to reinvigorate it, make it look shiny, uh, and clean out the, the guts. And so it's just getting better and better. It is an open source project, like all of the IPFS stuff. If you're interested in web extensions, it's a really cool one. So uh, IPFS slash IPFS companion is where to go and send all your wicked contributions to. 
meanwhile, I got bored of writing web extensions and turned my attention to the web UI. Uh, there's an old one. Has anyone seen the IPFS web UI? Some. Well, it's getting shinier. So there's this open web UI button in Companion. And in this beta version that I'm running, the web UI looks entirely different. And, oh, <laughs> it's dark, dark mode. Uh, so it does things like track your bandwidth over time. I think what I'm going to do is flip back to this one because I had one running, but I didn't leave it running. Anyway, uh, this looks nicer. That's the main contribution that I have given to this project. Uh, we've also completely rewritten it to be a bit more maintainable. Uh, so in the background, what it's doing is some, there's some cool stuff. So we're just sort of giving you an idea of the network traffic. So uh, why is my node talking already? Well, uh, I've got a list of peers that I'll just quickly demonstrate. I've got a list of peers connected. So this is my swarm. If you've used BitTorrent, you're like, oh my god, I've got thousands of people who I could possibly give me content. That's rad. Um, this is kind of pretty if you hit refresh and it loads and you go blah, 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 and people appear. Um, why, so why, so back over here, like I'm not hosting really cool content, I'm hosting silly content like cat gifs and the words welcome to London written in an ASCII-fied font. So why is there network traffic? Well, one of the things that's going on under the hood is we try and dog food IPFS. So this is an IPFS app on IPFS. Um, the cool thing that David Diaz certainly touched last, uh, geo IPFS GOIP. So how do we know where people are? We're not tracking people. It's just that you have to connect via IP addresses. If you happen to be still using boring old IPv4 and you connect to us, we can run it through the Geo MaxMine database. It's, I don't know, you, many of you are developers. You've all had to do something with the MaxMine database at some point. It's a horrible process. David has made it so much better. He's put the database as a static object onto IPFS with some cleverness that means you can just get the portion that you need. So it's, could you just say a couple of words about it? Uh, I actually it, don't deserve that the amount of time okay. you gave me. I just like fixed uh, the latest version. The, the point is you've, ta you've taken the database that is normally a database that you have to run a process to query, mm -hmm. and you've turned it into a static index of the data that you can query a subset of very efficiently over IPFS. Yeah. So, under, so the reason for the traffic there, I'm not hosting cool content, I'm hosting boring content, but there's some traffic going on. I mean, I may be hosting something, but. Uh, some of this traffic is just the, the GOIP lookups going on under the hood where the database exists on peers on the network and the peer IP, you get the point, I've said too many words. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, anyway, as you'd expect, the core of IPFS, it's got file system in the name, there are some files on it, it's great. I've uploaded a Debian distro, so maybe some people are getting that from me, who knows. Uh, there you can, we show videos, I often show this one because it makes me look like more of an idiot than I am. Welcome to Distributed Web. Uh, yeah, that's me. Uh, so if you, have, if you have things like that. Um, so what else is going on? Uh, settings editor, early explorer, blah, 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 blah. This thing's got loads of stuff going on. I'm going to just cut to the other thing, which is uh, we also dog food it in, con in our continuous. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Slow down. So we use um, CI, like many good dev shops, we rely on CI to tell us when we break things. Also, it's nice because I build web apps. I quite like to know that what I've tested is what is live. So we use, uh, we use IPFS as part of our CI service. So I've got the bleeding edge of the web UI on IPFS.io. Uh, I've rewritten it and made it clever. That's clever. Uh, what I actually want to show the URL. <laughs> uh, one moment. The web UI. Alan, how long have I been talking for? Oh, God. <laughs> Start booing when it gets too boring. OK, um, so if you are using IPFS right now, you have access to the version 1 of the web UI. If you want to see what's coming, basically every time we merge something to master, webui.ipfs.io, as part of our build process, I may as well show that real quick, because you're, you're developers, right? IPFS web UI. I can normally type, except when people are watching. There's a pull request, there's uh, fixed counts in pie charts. You know, we're developers, we make mistakes, whatever. Da, 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 da. So that's all cool, but let's show the checks. One of the checks is our Jenkins bot, and it's rendered a preview of this commit. Where's it rendered it to? It's rendered it to IPFS, oh my god! So that's the CID. So part of the testing is we build out the deployment version of the site. Uh, if you've ever built a web app, 
you will need to think about relative URLs again, relative paths. That's the key to making it portable, whether it's on the domain or whether it's on this subpath. Like, uh, if you've ever been a Java uh, servlet developer, this will be very familiar to you. Um, one last thing, my baby. Uh, I love this more than myself because I have a fragile ego. Uh, I built the I built the Explorer, so underneath the hood. Oh, oh come on, I'm your best. You can do it. Uh, underneath the hood of uh, the file system view of the world is the IPLD data model, and I built a thing to explore it, but it's not loading now in the demo conditions. That's great. Um, what would you be seeing now? Okay, imagine <laughs> that the file system is a tree, and underneath that tree is a, a directed acyclic graph of nodes that could have come from any of your peers, and that the links between nodes in the graphs are Merkle links, which is to say they are content addressed. They point to, they are hash, hashes of the content they expect to find at the next node in the graph. This would be exploring that if it was loading. I will try one more time via a different URL. Do, 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 do. Maintain your enthusiasm. No. We will move on. Boring. Boop, boop, boop. So, some other things to think about. Uh, DNS links, uh, they, how does that all work? So, web UI is a CID hash. It's less confusing if we remove that from the thing. Uh, is a domain, uh, but it's not like physically hosted on just one server, it's hosted on the IPFS network. So, how do you like host a website on the IPFS network, still keeping domain names for human friendliness? Well, uh, DNS links, so you have a TXT record in DNS, that you update when you want to change something. Uh, and the TXT record uh, looks a little, let me not talk about it, let me show it. So uh, I've got webui.ipfs.io as a domain, and I'll copy and paste that. And I can query IPFS by saying IPFS DNS. I can say IPFS DNS. And it tells me what the current CID for that domain is. What it's done there is it's gone and checked the DNS record underscore DNS link in the TXT as the key, and then it points to the current IPFS path, which is IPFS da 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 da. So then when our CI service does a build, we merge to master, uh, we have a script that just tells our DNS provider to go and update that TXT record. So then uh, if, so what happens in people who don't run companion is that it then hits our HTTP gateway and it will find the content on the network and serve it. Uh, if you are running companion, Companion will just redirect to this. Am I just standing in front of it? Am I talking about something that you can't see? Uh, it'll just redirect your uh, browser to that CID instead of trying to bother uh, the HTTP gateway. Anyway, that's enough from me. Thank you very much. I've been Oli Zoller. <laughs>